Okay, good morning to all of you guys. So today we're working on this 2017 Toyota Fielder. And in this episode, we are finally going to, we're gonna do a very in-depth video about servicing the hybrid system in this particular vehicle, which we can also compare it to the Toyota Aqua, or the Prius C, Toyota Corolla Axio. So if you wanna get to know, stay tuned and we'll continue then. All right, so if you can appreciate, that is the suction ventilation to cool the high voltage battery, which is located, of course, underneath the back seat of the vehicle. So we're gonna take it out. Let's continue. All right, here we go. So we're basically just removing these clips on right under the seat. Just give me a second. Hey, remember that I'm working with my hands, <laughs> with only one hand, I'm sorry. All right. There, there it is. So this first one is out. Yes, you can see this is the suction ventilation directly to the cooling fan. And the next one, again, let's see if we can see the yeah, cooling fan over here. Sorry. There it is. And voila, look what we have over here. This is the high voltage battery. <laughs> Let me just finish the ticket out and I'll show you in just a moment. All right, so as you can appreciate, we have the 12 volt battery right next to the high voltage battery under the seat. So now we need to pull these cover out. So we'll continue then. Just give me a second. It is actually very easy. You just, it just goes in by pressure. You just have to pull it out and that's it. All right, so here we have fully access to the frame which of course we still have to take it off. <laughs> All right, so let's continue. All right, so now that we have fully access to the frame, we're just going to remove the bolts. But before that, we got to disconnect the 12 volt battery. That's the rule number one. All right, let's continue. All right, now the following warning is to avoid you. If you want to do it yourself, this type of work, make sure before putting your hands on any component that has this bright light orange color that means high voltage so high voltage can kill you all right so you definitely want to avoid touching this if you do not have the proper training so i repeat if you want to put your hands into this type of components get the proper training all right you need to follow safety protocols because this is important if you do not follow the safety protocols, you can get killed. So just want to make a quick review about this because it's definitely important because I've seen in a lot of YouTube videos, uh, a lot of people put it in his hand. Thank God nothing has happened, but you you never know, all right? So accidents really happen. So make sure to get a proper training, follow the procedures, safety protocols, and that's it. We'll continue then. All right, so after we remove the service plug, all right, we're going to locate it in a very safe, uh, any place that you could put it away together with the keys that nobody has access to it, all right? So in this case, I'm putting it in my pocket. I'm pretty sure nobody will have access to it. Then we're going to remove these topper ventilation. So this is the exhaust ventilation of the battery. Oh fan sucks the air blows under the battery travels through the cells right here and then comes out through this air duct directly outside of the vehicle all right so we're gonna take it off and we continue then. all right so after we safely remove the service plug we're going to use this little nut over here to as a tool to take out this clip safety clip all right so I gotta use both my hands. So let me just take it out and we'll continue. Give me a second. All right, so with the safety plug, we just turn this around and that's it. Clip this out. Let's put it in a safe place. Now we can take off the cover in order to disconnect the lines that goes through the inverter. All right, let's continue then. All right, after everything has been disconnected, we gotta take out these covers, as you can see. And then we have access to the 
controller for the junction blocker to activate the power relays. We have the positive and negative terminals outlet. This is the outlet, positive and negative, to the directly to the inverter, which by this clip, we just need to disconnect it and that's it. So let's just disconnect the junction block over here. This is the electronics. We gotta disconnect the fan, cooling fan, it's disconnected. All right, let's get to the other side for a moment. Give me a second. Then we have right in this side, the battery management unit. And this one, as you can see, this is the interlock switch that goes in the safety plug. So let's continue. All right, guys, back in business. So we already disconnect the positive and negative terminal through the clips. We already measure the voltage. We know for sure that we our voltage is safe zero. So the battery is now completely disconnected. We just have to take out these four bolts to the size and voila, the battery is free to go up. So let's continue and I'll show you. All right, the battery is completely losing. As you can see, I can move it with my hands. It's not so heavy, but still it will be better to take it out uh, two persons. First of all, because you will save your back for future pains and just to be careful because it's, it's, it's a little, it's just volume, it's big. All right, so let's continue. I'm gonna take the battery to the lab. All right, back here in the lab. Okay, so we can identify here, we have the battery part number. This is made by Primer EV Energy. This is a company in Japan, all right? Let's see what we got over here. Of course, we cannot read all these instructions. But these are just safety instruction. They're in Japanese. I'm pretty sure if you're located in any place in America selling this vehicle, you will see them. But one thing for sure, we can read high voltage inside. All right, so remember, get a proper training before you put your hands on this, okay? So we have over here the main connectors for the safety plug grip. So once you take off the safety plug grip, you absolutely separate in half the high voltage battery. So instead of having 144 voltage, it has half. So that means that voltage, DC voltage, we could consider that it's safe to work. We have here the little jack for the interlock switch. And we have over here the connection for the battery management unit. And as you can see the cells inside. And all these tiny little cables over here, you see these are the temperature sensors. So let's just continue from this side. Let's see what we got here. All right, so we have this cable over here this one is the connection for the current sensor and this one is the intake air temperature sensor our positive and negative outlet DC high voltage our controllers for the uh, activated relays and basically that's it so what we're gonna do is just let's take it apart and let's see what we got all right, so we fully took up all the covers. As you can see, this is uncovered. We have fully access to the management unit. So as you can see, it has a low voltage connection. It has the connection for the one, two, three, and four temperature sensors. And of course, the current sensor located right here. Okay, you gotta take this off anyway. And also, remember that how do we monitor the high voltage from the individual cells right through this connection over here okay now we can take this off we have full access to the junction plug we got to take it off we have the inlet air duct which as you can see this tiny little hole where, where the temperature sensor goes right so let's continue then okay so once we finally push out all the components right we put it in order here to the side it's now time to remove all the connecting lugs or what you also can call them the bus bars so what happened what is it that we're really doing here well just take a closer look so in time especially where in countries where the humidity is pretty high there's it's completely normal that corrosion comes 
into each one of the connectors. There's a lot of power running into these cells and of course corrosion is gonna come, that's inevitable. So what, what you should do, you should service there certain often. Right, so at this very moment, I'm taking out one of the connecting lugs. As you can see, they begin to create a little corrosion and carbon build because of the temperature, all right? And that, of course, in time creates resistance. So resistance is just a chain reaction to catastrophe because every, every the more resistance that you get, the more temperature the battery will get and the more overheat and eventually it will start damaging the module itself. And finally, of course, the full battery. So what are we gonna do? Uh, well, you got two options. You can just take these out and properly clean them, or you can just replace it. So my recommendation, you can just replace it. It's not so expensive. Use the nickel metal uh, connecting lugs or bus bars, and they are very affordable, and they don't get corroded too fast as these um, copper connecting lugs. All right, so let's continue. So now that we safely remove the small connecting lug, so we are ready to remove the large one, which contains also the connections for the battery monitoring, all right? As you can see, yes, there is still a lot of corrosion. Let's just take it out. Well, as you can see, I'm working with one hand totally safe because remember the circuit there's no circuit anywhere so oh voila we have now fully access to the battery modules but the following explanation that I'm going to give you guys it's about discussing how in the world do you service this battery why and how often okay make sure to subscribe that button share this video because this information coming is amazing all right so uh, we'll continue that okay so we completely remove the battery pack from the main frame all right so as you can see this main frame you got to take it out certain often because remember the at the air enters from the bottom and then blows up through these air gaps between the modules all right can you see all right so in time debris dirt especially some people that have a dog whatever uh debris turns to accumulate uh between the gaps and this should be serviced. So my recommendation is definitely once a year. And of course, you gotta clean all this frame because all this frame, it accumulates. Now, I'm not talking particularly about this one because this one is uh, almost, uh, I'm not gonna say a brand new vehicle, but it's, the mileage is not so high. But the main purpose of this video is, let's discuss what in the world do we do to this cell. So let's continue and I will explain. Okay, so we're finally entering into the servicing of these battery packs. Now let's make it just a quick explanation that I have prepared over here. So some of you guys could be familiar if you use, for example, um, the Dr. Prius application. Do you remember that the battery management unit monitors the voltage, not of the individual module, but in pair of blocks. So we're monitoring the voltage of these two blocks together in pair so if we have a 20 individual modules connected in series I monitor it in blocks I will have the voltage of two of them together so this is how I you monitor the voltage using the system any type of scan tool but let's get familiar quickly using the for example the Dr. Prius application so in a normal operation of the battery we know that the cells should be should be in balance so what do we understand about balance they are lined up together charge and discharge all right so there's an oscillation in the graphic that you will see in pairs the so one goes up the other one goes down but they should be going equally all right so this is a proper battery operation using your for example the <clears throat> Dr. Prius. Now I have prepared here. Yes, you might be very familiar with this. You might realize some of the batteries that are giving you the E zero A eighty code. So the P zero A eighty code when it triggers the light in the dashboard 
that means replace the hybrid battery pack. So they're just basically telling you that replace the pack. So we want to understand, we want to know what happens. But when you see if you're using the tractor Prius application, you probably by monitoring the battery, you will see a V-shaped pattern. So this V-shaped pattern is basically telling you that the weakest cells for some reason are the ones in the middle. So as you can see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we can see number one and number ten are the highest one. So progressively they're starting to lose capacity. Now the thing is we want to know why this is a common pattern in these batteries why does this happen so much well the answer is simple it's just heat so if we follow the v-shaped pattern we know that the cells on these sides they do not suffer too much if the cells in the middle they suffer something that it's called thermal stress all right so the thermal stress that means basically what happens if you leave a phone in the sun and your other phone you always store it in the shade well, of course, the, the battery and the phone that it's in the sun every day eventually is going to go bad really fast. So the thermal stress affects pretty much the cells in the middle. And of course, in time, you will get your V-shaped pattern and of course, your battery will be totally weight out of balance. But not only out of balance, but totally lost capacity. And finally, the battery uh, simply damaged. So you will have to replace this most of the cells in the middle <clears throat> and so basically I uh, just want to make a quick <laughs> comparison for example of a vehicle so this is a vehicle driving all right in one direction so if I ask you for example why do you rotate why does the factory owners manual tells you that rotate the tires like for example if you're driving the vehicle in one direction and you're braking which tire is gonna go is gonna receive the more the most weight, the most stress, the rear or the front. We know for sure that the, bat, the tires in the front are the ones who suffer the most stress. So if you leave these tires over here like forever, of course, in a certain short or middle term period of time, these tires are gonna go bad way much more faster than the ones in the back. So what do you do? Okay. You rotate your tires simple as that and what do we do here well exactly the same we take out the cells and we fully in order we rotate them we rotate them so now the cells in the middle are going to the sides and in both sides basically that's how it works so if you do this at least every, I'm not gonna say probably every six months, but probably once a year, you shouldn't get any trouble. These batteries are supposed to last, to, to last years and years. The problem is that if you never service it, of course, you will get your V-shaped pattern pretty much faster than what it should. So this is happening pretty much to 2015, 16, 17, even 18 vehicles that of course they never service the hybrid system. We have over here the battery cooling fan. Now it's not really the case on this vehicle, but it's a very common issue. Take a look at the blades. Now who's responsible of this? We know heat, of course, but heat, debris, dirt, the fan, some of the fans, if you, if you see in, especially the Asian market, a lot of countries like uh, Thailand, Pakistan, um, and you see those countries are a lot of dirt and people of course having hybrid vehicles and if they don't even know that they have a cooling system for the battery and you see a lot of mats over here and even here in the caribbean where we have a lot of uh, japanese market vehicles so yes then you see that this happens pretty much often so to avoid that okay we take out the whole frame we clean the individual modules we rotate them we put it back together we put some new connecting lugs then we're going to cycle the battery. What we call cycle, where you connect it, like for example, I use the Prolong. The Prolong is just a collective charger and discharge. So what I'm gonna do, if by chance I have cells giving me out of balance with this machine, the only thing I do is just restore back to its proper balance compared to 
the others okay so that's basically servicing this type of nickel metal hydride high voltage battery so then we're gonna service and we'll continue then so before uh, rotating yourself you don't want to get lost I would strongly recommend you to always have a guide in your side covers in plastic for example in this one it says BMU it's battery management unit we know that the battery management unit goes directly into the negative and positive mark and to the junction block right here it says junction block the direction you know the positives over here you know, the, the negatives over here and the other thing is especially do not get lost with the position of the cells you identify each one of them remember that you start the counting from the computer so the closest cell to the computer that's your number one so if you, if you compare for example in the Prius or some other Toyota vehicles the junction the, the computer management could be in the in this side so if it's in this side your number one will be here so in case of Toyota Prius C the Aqua the Filler Sienta the management units from this side so this is how you count but not, not only the individual but you also count them in blocks so so I have a number 1 to 20 and I have my blocks identified 1 to 10 so this way once you rotate them you will keep control of the position of each one let's continue then I almost forgot one other big recommendation that you might want to be aware of every time you want to want to identify a, 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 when a battery is not good once you take up these covers and you see they match with the, with the distance the cells to these tubes you know that these cells are completely fine now you do not want to take these out right after you were driving the vehicle all right you got to leave the battery to cool down for many hours I actually do receive this vehicle uh, yesterday so I leave the vehicle totally cooling for all the night now what happens for example if you take this and it, it suddenly it blows up because all the batteries are swollen swollen batteries are gassing batteries inside right that means that battery it's not it's not gonna be good in time because I seen many guys buying foreign use and use back recon, what you call reconditioning packs and they're all swollen so when you when you're going to assemble happens that the 20 packs are here and then you have to pull them with a the belt. No, no, no. Believe me, do not do that. Ba swollen batteries are gassing batteries. Those batteries won't, won't last so much. A good battery is not swollen. As simple as that. All right? So you want to remember that. Okay, so without any complications, we just extract the first half of the battery, the one number one to the five blocks, and the number six to the number 10 block. And what we're going to do, we're just going to switch position. All right, but before doing that, okay, so we know that we're going to put the battery in exactly this position, okay? We need to separate the cells because remember, we need to, we need our positive to match, right? Basically that. Okay, sorry, I got interrupted. Uh, okay, uh, but um, so what do we do then? Before assembling this whole pack over here, we separate the cells. And remember, these cells are has a metal layer over here, which is a heat exchanger, right? What do we do? We just clean it with a piece of cloth. No grease, nothing. It has to be a dry cloth. Just make sure to take out all the all the any type of debris that this could have, and that's it. So once you do it to all of them, we can assemble the whole block right here totally opposite let's continue then. all right so we have now the full pack is totally rotated now you can see the number eight, the number 11, was supposed to be in the middle, right? But still, right here and matching to the positive, negative, negative. And then you can see the number one, instead of being here, now it's in the middle, 
together with the number 10. Now you can see, now the cells who were receiving the most thermal stress, for example, six and seven, pretty much, and also number five and number four, they are now totally relocated in. So in this place, they won't receive as much as stress as the one is in the middle. So if you do this, every certain often, believe me, you will have battery for years and years. And before assembling, yeah, we make sure they're not swollen, so we can easily put the bolts. Let's see, just a moment. That's it. And we will have absolutely no trouble. Tighten, tighten back the frame. So we'll continue then. Okay, so about the bus bars. Yes, these bus bars definitely need to be clean. But I think it would be better just to replace them for brand new nickel plate bus bars. They weigh much more efficient. They don't get corroded as fast as, as the, the copper. And they're not actually too much. They're, they're, they're not expensive actually. They're about 30 US. So let's just start assembling these and we'll continue then. Right now, here's the thing. I'm not really against cleaning the boss bars the only issue is that you have to submerge these connecting lugs in vinegar to properly take out all the corrosion but then you will have to polish them so how long will it take to do this now, this is a Toyota Prius C what happens if you do it to a Prius or uh, for example the Camry that uses 36 uh, 36 blocks um, I'm sorry 36 cells no that's too much so, as you can see, this boss bar, they are fully new and polished. Let's take a look at the condition of a, of a polished one, or ori in original condition, that won't give you absolutely no resistance. They have to be in this condition. Now, it doesn't happen on this one because this is the positive side. We know that the, the negative side of the battery is the one who really gets more corroded. So this, of course, is going to take a lot of time. <laughs> so, yep, it's definitely better just to just put your new nickel plate. Remember, you don't want to leave your fingerprint, right? Because, you see, that will cause us a small resistance. So you really want to clean them and don't put your hands on it. Okay, let's start to assemble them. Okay, so we have successfully changed all the post bars. And of course, cleaning the voltage sensing monitor connectors, all right? With a piece of cloth and vinegar, and you will get rid of all the corrosion that might be there, all right? Now let's start to assemble this back. We'll continue. Okay, by the way, before I forget, uh, before we assemble the battery management unit, we know that the management unit has a connection directly to the high voltage, right? Through this cables and sometimes I'm not saying in this vehicle but I have many cases already vehicle not starting because there's no signal from the battery to the battery management unit so what you should do is just open up the management unit and you will see if you have any type of corrosion from the pins all right as I said not in this case in this case the computer is completely fine I mean in some other cases and you might have find a problem because there's no communication. Most of the times, it's just because there is no, there is a lot of corrosion in this connection. So if this is the situation, you might want to change this. Definitely, don't take any risk because remember the corrosion travels inside the cable, so you will never get rid of it. All right? So we will continue then. All right. So we're assembling back the connecting logs or bus bars. So before doing that, we gotta make sure our poles are matching, all right? On both sides, you know it's perfect. We know that our positive main outlet or inlet for the battery matches the positive to the junction block. And then the negative is the one who goes to the last one through this long cable, all right? Now the first thing we're gonna do is remember, I would strongly recommend assemb first assemble the long one. The reason is because if you make a single mistake, let's make an example there for you, 
put it by mistake one position run it to a side you can create a fire because remember you will short it to the other side so you don't want to do that you want to pay very much attention to this it is delicate right so be very much precautious this has to go in only one position let's say if you run it just one you will create a fire it's delicate right connection to the management unit and that's it moment that's it we just need to put the two poles and the rest of the nuts so let's continue okay as you can see everything is fully tightened so we can now assemble the cover but we won't cover this just yet because remember we're going to connect them at the the charging machine over here. Remember that we need to rebalance the battery. All right, let's continue. All right, as you can see, everything's fully clean. All connections are good. It's time to just put on the covers. We can now proceed to connect the battery pack to the balancing machine. Let's just connect it and we'll continue. 156 volts. That is the current voltage of the high voltage battery. We have it connected with the safety plug. The circuit it's totally closed. So we have our prologue machine connected to the positive and negative to this tiny little case. What this machine do is collectively charge each one of the modules in order to remember if we have the V shape or it's not equal, they will all charge equally and finally restore the loss capacity. That's basically what it does. So this one is just a universal low amp rate charger. And then we can also use the discharger to give it a three cycles deep discharging. As I said, this is just to restore the memory loss. Basically that's it. This, now this process takes a few days. So what we're gonna do in this case, because this battery is, it's, it's not that it's not that bad we're going to give it one cycle and then the other ones i will show you in the very end of the video <laughs> all right so we'll continue then all right guys this is a couple of days later after we fully cycled the high voltage battery these cells are fully in balance now so we have a voltage of 165 on the battery that means we're having around uh, 8.25 volts each one of the module so this battery is in fully balanced we are just going to finish to assemble and install it on the vehicle so let's continue then so we're making here a little bonus stage this is the high voltage battery cooling fan we of course we completely disassembled we take out the blade we submerge the blade in some water soup, non-oily, and we fully clean it until it's as good as new. All right, once everything is fully clean, we lubricate the shaft a little bit. It only goes in one position, All right? So let me just, just a second here. That's it. There she is. Don't forget the center clip, give me a second. And that's it, that's it. <laughs> it's a little weird because I'm doing this with only one hand. <laughs> anyway, that's it. So, this is ready to assemble. Now let's put this battery inside the vehicle. And we'll continue. All right, guys, so the battery is full in position. We just need to uh, 
assemble all the bolts and connect everything. Don't forget, every time you service your battery, put your signature, your sign, what date, the last time this battery was serviced. Try to record that in all of your batteries, right? So you will have a very great control with your customers. So we will continue then. We're almost over. All right, so we're finishing to put all the covers from the battery. The battery is fully tightened. All the connections are good. And don't forget to put your high voltage warning little clip. That's it. It's just to warn you that it's high voltage in here, right? So let me see. Yes. Now it's time to connect the 12 volt battery. Uh, activity hybrid system and let's see if this vehicle starts all right so we have successfully serviced the hybrid system in this Toyota Fielder as it said it's the same Prius C Toyota Aqua Corolla Axio uh, Yaris Vitz and Toyota Sienta I mean if you're watching this video from all over the world what type of what type of vehicle matches with this setup all this Toyota that I just mentioned and everything is fully assembled as you see over here the service plug is connected where we're just the 12 volt battery is the one missing but everything is fully assembled fully clean and uh, we're just going to assemble back the frame and start the vehicle everything should be just great I really hope you guys enjoy this video uh, let's just continue to assembling and we will continue then. All right, so it is the moment of truth. Once, of course, we already assembled the, all the frame, 12 volt battery is connected. Let's give it a shot. All right, we got our keep up. All right. All right, so we heard four clicks. That's what I want to hear. The vehicle, as you can see, is ready mode. That means vehicle is ready to drive. Oh, above that, eh? All right. Just a moment. Yes. Okay, well, all right, guys, the vehicle starts with no problem. All right, uh, so, well, it was a very long and explicit video for uh, educational purposes. It took a couple of days to do this. It's the most uh, difficult part could be, come on, give me a second. It's because of the cycling the battery that takes time because that's a very slow process. You have to charge and discharge the battery at a very low rate. So as you can see, well, everything's um, very good. She's good to go. So what we're gonna do is just finish to assemble the all the covers and um, well, there, there's some other things that we need to do to the vehicle: to change oil, change the transmission. But uh, I wanted to make a real, real in-depth servicing of the hybrid system i think this is going to be one of the greatest videos on the channel so please do not forget like and subscribe hit that button and share this video probably you have a lot of friends and other customers of yours that really would like to know how is this hybrid service is done in this type of vehicle so well in the meantime i hope you guys enjoyed and uh, i'll see you in the next episode try to support us subscribing because great great videos are coming I got two inverters ready to disassemble you don't want to miss that all right that's coming very soon take care guys next episode I'll see you